Hey fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today's video is going to be on Euler's number. Euler, it looks like it spells Euler, but pronounced Euler. Euler's number is 2.72. I'm going to kind of show you how Bernoulli came up with the idea of Euler's number through compound interest. It's really pretty cool progression, and it should make sense as we kind of look through these examples. Before we get started on Euler's number, the number E, just go back to this number right here. This Greek letter pi is a constant, it's a number. It is a ratio or circumference over diameter. If both those units were in inches, the units would cancel and it would be unitless. It's something like 22 sevenths or 3.14. It is not a variable, it is a constant. It's just a number 3.14. And that is similar to Euler's number E. E is two point, or approximately 2.72. It is an irrational number, the same as pi, and this is a decimal approximation to it. Uh, Bernoulli came up with Euler's number through interest, and I'm gonna run through that right now. And then Euler really found a lot of applications with Euler's number, natural growth, natural decay. One interesting thing about Euler's number is the derivative of Euler's number is equal to that number. It is the only thing that the derivative is equal to the function. So it has a lot of applications in calculus as well. And science and economics, uh, it works out to be really applicable. All right, so let's start with interest here. We have two equations for interest. This one right here is called simple interest. This is the amount you will have afterwards. It is equal to the principal, the amount you put in the bank. One plus the number of periods is n. R is the rate of interest. That's simple interest, and how that would work with this example here is let's say I have $100 in the bank at 100% interest. I know you're never gonna earn 100% interest. You might have to pay 100% interest if you go to a loan shark. But this is a good number to see where Euler's numbers come from. So using my equation for simple interest, I'm putting $100 in the bank. My interest rate is 100% or 1.00, so I have 100 times one plus at 100%. This is two, two times 100 is equal to $200. And what that means is at 100% interest, with simple interest, I put my money in the bank, at the end of a year, I have $200. $100 is my principal, $100 in interest. However, it usually doesn't work that way. It usually works continuous interest. So we're gonna look at compounding the interest. Compounding is a really kind of interesting idea and wealth is really based on understanding this idea. So compounding interest, the amount out of the bank is equal to the principal, what you put in, times one plus the rate of interest, the number of compounding periods times time in years to the power of number of compounding periods times time in years. So with simple interest, it's an arithmetic sequence, but with compound interest, it's geometric. Addition, subtraction, multiplication. So let's take a look at an example of that. Let's say I'm gonna compound quarterly. So I'm gonna compound quarterly, that means every three months I earn interest on my interest. I put that $100 in the bank, I earn $100 interest over the year, so after the first quarter, I would have $25 in interest. So after three months, I'd have $125 in the bank, and then I would start earning interest on that 125. Then after six months, whatever's in there, I would st now start earning interest on my interest. So if I compound quarterly, I take that one, I divide it by four, I add one to it, this becomes 1.25 to the power of 4 is 2.44. 2.44 times my $100 gives me 244. So if I'm working simple interest, I earn 200 bucks after one year. If I have the same money in the bank but I am compounding quarterly, I have $244 in the bank. Let's take a look at compounding it monthly, 12 months in a year. I go one divided by 12 plus that one to the power of 12 
and that gives me 2.61. 2.61 times my $100 principal gives me $261 in the bank. So you can see the more you compound it, the more you earn. Don't forget the converse is true too, and this is where people get killed with borrowing. If you are borrowing, the bank's charging you the same way. It is compounded continuously, so they are charging you money on the money you owe, on the interest you owe, and it just kind of escalates out of control. It's great if you're earning that interest, and it hurts if you're borrowing that money. So let's not say I'm compounding it monthly, I am compounding it daily. 365 days in a year, one divided by 365, plus that one to the power of 365, now I get 2.71. 2.71 times my $100, now I have $271 in the bank after that one year. So it goes up a lot in the first compounding, but as I go from quarterly to monthly, monthly to daily, it only goes up a little, still going up. Now, let's say I compound it hourly. So one divided by 365 days in the year times 24 hours in a day. So I'm gonna do one divided by that number, 8760, plus one to the power of 8760, and I get 2.72, or 2.718. So 2.72 times my initial Principal of 100 bucks gives me $272. And I could keep going. I could compound it, not hourly, but by the minute. So I multiply this by 60. I could compound it by the second, this big number, times 60 times 60. I could multiply it or compound it by the millisecond. And as this denominator, as I compound it more and more and more, this thing gets larger and larger and larger. This thing gets larger and larger and larger, so it is a limit. As this starts to approach infinity, my output is 2.72, and that's how Bernoulli came up with the number E, 2.72. So it's pretty cool. Uh, a couple of takeaways. Euler's number was actually originally discovered through compounding continuously, and uh, it's a really useful number. The reverse of E is a natural logarithm. Just like the reverse of X squared is a square root, you undo a square with a square root, you undo something uh, E to some power with a natural log. A lot of applications of that. And then much later, Euler just found out so many cool things like natural growth, natural decay with Euler's number. Okay, hopefully that was informative. Hopefully you kind of understand where Euler's number come from. I appreciate your time watching. Thank you.